So, Premier League predictor week number 10. So far, I don't think I got a single result right. <laughs> but that is the Premier League for you. It is so competitive from one week to the next that it is nearly impossible to predict all the results. Um, but I'll have another go. Third time lucky. Let's see where we go. Now, the first game of the weekend is the early kickoff on Saturday. And that is up at Old Trafford, where Man United entertain Tottenham. Uh, Man United fresh off the back of a defeat against Huddersfield. So shout out to Huddersfield. They were fantastic against Man United. They were 2-0 up. And in the end, they got the result. And it was the first time they'd beaten them. I know they haven't played each other many times, but it was the first time they'd beaten them for donkey's years. Um, so shout out to them. And yeah, Man United, I don't know what happened there, but they had more than enough to beat Huddersfield. Just goes to show though, you can have all the top players you want. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to walk every game. Tottenham, on the other hand, haven't got all the top players they want. And they absolutely blitzed Liverpool. That could have been a cricket score. Um, that first half, Tottenham just sat back and it was the perfect counter-attacking football. Liverpool had a little bit of a go in the second half, but the damage was already done inside 12 minutes. Um, Dejan Lovren must be sitting there scratching his head, having nightmares over some of that defending. But, yeah, this one's going to be hard to call. Um, I think both managers have got a bit of respect for each other. I don't really see a gung-ho match end-to-end. Um, -end. I don't see any of that, although the onus is on Man United, seeing as they're the home team. And I think Tottenham would be happy with a draw up at Old Trafford. But... Like I said, I've not called any results or maybe one or two right. Um, I'm going to go for Manchester United 1, Tottenham Hotspur 1. The next game of the weekend sees my team, Arsenal, taking on Swansea. Keep your eyes peeled for the preview on that. That will be coming out tomorrow on Thursday. Um, and I'll give you my 1-11 to and my predicted scoreline in that game and my thoughts on that game um, leading into it. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Moving on, the next game is Crystal Palace at home to West Ham United. Now, these two teams are desperately struggling down the bottom end of the table. Um, both, both managers, I still think, personally, I know Hodgson's not been there all that long, but I do believe that they're both bang under pressure. Um, any more losses, I can quite easily see Slav and Bilic getting sacked. Um, Roy Hodgson, yes, I know he's only just come in, but he's under pressure. He don't want to have relegation on that CV with Crystal Palace. So he's under pressure to turn that around as quickly as possible. Now, they did beat Chelsea a few weeks ago, but then they went up to Newcastle and they lost 1-0. Uh, West Ham United, like I said, they've been so far off of being good this season, it's unreal. And I've got nothing against West Ham. I actually don't mind them as a club, and I think their manager's half sensible at times. Not that West Ham fans are agreed, but there we go. I see this being quite an entertaining match, probably one of the most entertaining we're going to see this weekend, because there's so much riding on this game. One of these teams has to go and go for it and try and get the three points. I'm going with Crystal Palace 2, West Ham United 1. Next game of the weekend sees Watford at home taking on Stoke City. Now, Watford were flying high. They beat my team, Arsenal, a few weeks back. And they were beating Chelsea and should have had that game absolutely dead and buried. Richarlison missing two absolute sitters that could have put them 3 or even 4-1 up. Um, ultimately, that come back to bite them in the backside. Because Chelsea brought on Batshuayi, who ultimately turned the game, and the rest is history. Now, Stoke City, they're, um, <laughs> they're in a spot of bother, I think. And I think a lot of their fans are starting to run out of patience with Mark Hughes. And I can see him being another one that's in for getting the sack before much longer. They've spent quite a lot of money in the last couple of years. And I expected a hell of a lot better from Stoke City. And I'm sure most of their fans did too. 
Um, again, I do see this game being quite an entertaining game. Watford, with Marco Silva as their manager, they're flying high. They're very well drilled and they're decent to watch. Um, Stoke, on the other hand, none of that really. And, that, well, that's just how it is. Anyway, my score prediction for this game is Watford 3, Stoke City 2. The next game of the weekend sees West Bromwich Albion at home at the Hawthorns taking on Manchester City, the current league leaders. Now, I was listening to the radio the other day and I heard quite an alarming stat if you're a West Brom fan. They have won three of the last 22 league games. Wow, I didn't realise they were doing that poorly, to be honest with you. Obviously, that goes back into last season as well because we're only nine games in. But that is really poor. Um, I expected a lot more from Pulis. Yes, he's a decent manager and I do believe that. Um, but a lot of West Brom fans that I heard on the radio station I was listening to the other day, they were calling for his head. They were saying the football's poor. Um, certain players being left on the bench like Phillips and McLean. Exciting players, crowd pleasers that get people up out of their seat. Um, and they were just so pissed off with the negative brand of football that Pulis is bringing there. Um, personally, I don't think he's that bad. Um, I think West Brom are not the kind of team, in my opinion, that are going to go and finish sixth. I'd say anywhere between ninth and twelfth is a decent finish for West Brom. But that's just my opinion. Now, on the other hand, Man City are riding high. They're top of the table. They're whacking teams to pieces week in, week out. Um, Aguero's obviously back as well now. Um, the one thing I will say about Manchester City is that nobody's really had a go at them yet. Yes, they've played a lot of games. They've played nine games. They haven't really had a test yet. Um, they will get that in a few weeks' time when they play my team, Arsenal. But it's about time somebody actually had a go at Man City. Um, don't see it being West Brom, though, sadly. So I only see this one going one way, and that is a Man City win. So I'm going West Bromwich Albion. One, Manchester City, four. The next game of the weekend sees Liverpool taking on Huddersfield. Now, Liverpool got absolutely spanked by Tottenham in their last game. And Huddersfield must be still on cloud nine after they beat Man United. Now, I don't know what it is at Liverpool at the minute, but something's not quite clicking for them. Defensively, they're absolutely abysmal. But... I do see them pulling out a result and winning this game. I am going for Liverpool 3, Huddersfield 1. Moving swiftly on, the evening kickoff on Saturday sees Bournemouth hosting Chelsea. Now, Bournemouth got a win in their last game, surprisingly, because they've been bang average this season. And again, that is another manager which I think is under pressure. Yes, he's done wonders for that football club and he will always be seen as a Bournemouth legend to their fans. But it's a results business. And if they're languishing down in that bottom three come Christmas time, I can see him pushing the button on him. Chelsea, on the other hand, stopped the rot. Um, obviously, they were losing at home to Watford for large parts of that game. And then they dug it out and they got the result. Um, now, Morata in that game, I want to touch on him very quickly. They spent an awful lot of money on him and he was so average in that game. Yes, I know he scored in quite a lot of games this season, but if I was a Chelsea fan, I'd be looking at Morata and thinking, come on, you can do a little bit better than that. This could be the game he does that. He got a hat-trick against Stoke, I believe. Um, so yeah, this could be the game where he shows up and shows he's worth £75 million. I am going for Bournemouth 1, Chelsea 2. Now we move on to the Sunday fixtures and the first game on Sunday sees Brighton and Hove Albion fresh off of smashing West Ham up 3-0, taking on Southampton who come off of the back of an absolute wonder goal, shit defending up against West Bromwich Albion. Now these two teams baffle me a little bit. Um, they both try and play football. Um, whereas, in my opinion, they should just keep it simple to accommodate the players that they have. If Brighton stay up this season, I see it as a miracle for them. I don't think they've brought enough quality footballers to stay in this Premier League. But I'm sure I'll eat my words and I'm sure I'll have Brighton fans in my comments section 
if they do actually stay up. Now, Southampton, their manager, doesn't fill me with any confidence and wouldn't do if I was a Southampton fan. I think he's dry, I think he's plain and boring, and they're not really doing it this season. Um, again, another one that could be under the uh, microscope if they get a couple of bad results in the next few games. Now, I don't think Southampton will get a bad result in this game. I do think they'll get a draw, and I am going with Brighton 1, Southampton 1. Moving on to the last game on Sunday, and that sees Leicester City taking on Everton. Now, as it stands right now, both of these teams are doing absolute shit. Um, they've both potted their managers, and so they should have done. Craig Shakespeare, he took the wholesale piss in getting Claudio Ranieri sacked. So karma's a bitch for him, and I am fucking buzzing he got sacked. Because that is snaky, it's bang out of line, and there was no need for it. Um, now, Everton, this is where I am shocked. Ronald Koeman, I've said multiple times over the, over the past few years, I rate that guy as a football manager. I think he's a quality football manager. What ultimately got Ronald Koeman sacked is the fact that he didn't bother going out and buying a proper Premier League striker. Now, they sold Lukaku... And I've heard so many people talking on certain different shows on radio and TV and in the media talking about, oh yeah, but who was available that was going to replace Lukaku at a cheap price? Well, I'll tell you who. Jermaine Defoe. The, Jermaine Defoe knows the league inside out and was a free signing. So there was no excuses not to go and get Jermaine Defoe. Now, anyway, with that being said, I am going for a drab boring game with Leicester winning this 1-0. The last game of the weekend sees Burnley taking on Newcastle United. Now, Burnley's manager, Sean Dyche, is being heavily linked with the Everton job. Every Everton fan I've heard has said that they want him there. In my opinion, I think he's a fantastic manager. What he has done with Burnley is nothing short of an absolute miracle. Um, on a shoestring budget as well, let's not forget, compare that to any of the other teams in the league, his budget is minimal. So, fair play to him, and fair play to Burnley. They've kept hold of him as it stands, but football's quick, anything could happen, anything could change. If he does go to Everton, I wish him all the best, because I think he deserves a, a crack at a bigger club. And let's be real, Everton are a bigger club. Now, with all that being said... I see this being one of the most entertaining games over the weekend. I see that Newcastle have come off of the back of a victory against Crystal Palace and they're going to be full of beans going into this game. Burnley ain't all that at home, they're better away. So I see a close game, but I see an end-to-end -end game. I think both teams are going to go for this because they both think that they can win it. Um, I am going for Burnley free. Newcastle United won. Anyway, that's my Premier League predictor. I've got hardly any results right over the last two weeks of doing this. Let's hope my luck changes. Um, if you like what you're watching, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down below and smash the fuck out the like button. Anyway, I'm out of here. Laters, peeps. Mm -hmm.